What is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today I am bringing you guys the very first drift build of one of the cars from the new DLC pack that just came out. Now this is going to be a drift build of the 65 Mustang GT Coupe. Now, this car I'm expected to actually be pretty interesting because I've never actually built an old Mustang uh, for drifting really ever in Forza. I didn't do one in, in Forza 4, I didn't do one, I haven't done one yet here in Forza, Forza 5. And I think it's going to be actually a pretty cool, pretty cool drift car if I, if I can get it right. Which, it shouldn't be that hard to get right, because a lot of the muscle cars are, are pretty oversteery and slidey anyway. So, let's actually see what kind of color scheme we want. That's actually pretty cool. But, the black and red is pretty nice as well. I like, I like the red and black, but I also like the, um... The white and blue as well. I'm actually gonna go with the white and blue and we'll probably end up changing it But we'll probably end up changing it later on down the line, but ooh Mustang collector sweet But um, we'll probably end up changing that later on down the line, but I don't know if we'll change it uh, during the build now and This car obviously very classic iconic shape and I'm actually gonna give you guys a quick walk around of the car since it's new to Forza 5 and uh, just completely new to the DLC and I feel like I feel like I, I should because I haven't even done it yet So whoa, no way Oh, wow, okay. They don't let you actually look under uh, look under the hoods in a lot of these cars, but that looks sweet. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. That is a gorgeous engine bay. Absolutely gorgeous engine bay and a gorgeous motor. And let me actually look on the inside real quick as well. Because I realized I backed out and I was like, wait a second, I wanted to look at the inside. Dude, that looks awesome. Four speed manual. This interior this interior looks awesome. I'm just gonna say it right now, that interior looks awesome. We go ahead and start it right now and see how it sounds stock. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. I it definitely has a deep, throaty, uh, muscle car sound to it. Not quite as deep as some of the others, um, but it definitely has that iconic sound to it. Now, let's go ahead and get the suspension out of the way first, because we're gonna need to. We're definitely gonna need to. And as far as, as far as a lot of the things we're gonna do for this, one of the things that I wanna make sure of with this build is I'm gonna stick with the stock engine and build it up. I'm not gonna swap it, although I could. I'm not going to. I'm not going to swap it. I'm going to build up the stock engine uh, just to see what kind of power and torque we can get out of it because it's a strong engine. Um, and you could swap a newer motor into it if you wanted to. You, you could do that. And it might be really effective because it's a motor, say, that, you, that you're used to, for example. But I would really like, personally, when I do a lot of these older muscle car builds, I like to keep the stock engine in there and build it up as much as I possibly can because a lot of them have a nice, unique sound to them that... I don't know, it's just a really cool soundtrack to have when you're drifting, and it's a really it's a really cool thing to do also to keep the car sort of original but modified at the same time. Now we're definitely gonna need to stick street tires on here because these these old tires, these uh 1960s tires are not the best for drifting. We're definitely gonna upgrade the rear uh the rear tire width just a little bit. We don't wanna do it too much. I think it, I think a 225s um will be plenty for the amount of power we're gonna put in here. And as far as the the rims go. Probably gonna do something along the lines of some American racing wheels, and I think I've gone to the wrong place for those. <laughs> to be quite honest, I feel like I've gone to the wrong place for those. They're probably in the specialized rims. Because, yeah, there we go. That looks pretty awesome. That looks pretty awesome. I mean, they, they just fit perfectly. You put them on the car, and they just fit. It's like they were meant to be there. Bring up the sizes a little bit. 16s look nice. 17s look nice as well. I'm gonna go 17s actually. 17s look really, really nice. I'm wondering if I want to do 17s all round or like 16s in the front, 17s in the back. I think, I think 17s all round looks good. It's a nice balanced setup, nice clean balanced setup, and I think that just gives the car a really nice stance, really nice look. I mean, it's not stance nation or anything like that, but it doesn't need to be. It's a muscle car, and muscle cars kind of have their own stance to them, and that's what kind of makes them unique. Now, as far as the arrow and appearance, wow, I didn't even realize they could actually, actually had this much that you could do with it. Um, mm, I'm thinking about taking the bumper off, but I'm not sure. Kind of has a nice, complete look with it on, but with it off, I don't know. You know what? No, I'm actually going to take it off. I like the way it looks with it off. I'm going to take it off. 
And then for the for the rear wing, it's probably yeah, it's probably just a Forza wing. I I doubt there was any. Uh, I highly I was highly doubting that there was going to be anything there. Um, for the rear bumper, we're definitely going to leave that on because it gives it a really complete look. And unlike the front, where it just kind of looks like you've lightened it, if you take off if you take the back one off, it just kind of looks odd. It just looks weird. And I'm not going to put either of these on. They just kind of I don't know. They ruin the look of the car to me. I mean, maybe if you were going to build a drag car, they would work. But aside from that, not not really a fan. Now, as far as the aspiration conversion, we could actually put twin turbos on here, or we could supercharge it. And I want to be, like, on one hand, I want to go the classic American muscle route and do a supercharger. But on the other hand, I want to be unique and uh, and stick turbos in there. And turbos, you're obviously, you're going to deal with a little bit of lag. And a supercharger, you're going to be... You're going to be, the, the power is going to be a lot more reliable. It's going to be a really nice, smooth power band, but you're not going to be able to get quite as much power out of it. So, uh, God, I really like the turbos, but you know what? I do, I do turbos a lot in my car, so I'm actually going to go ahead and put a supercharger in this one because the supercharger is going to give a really even power band all the way throughout the power band, and also it's going to give us that nice supercharger sound. So, that will definitely be nice to have on top of this classic American V8 rumble that this thing is going to have. I mean, even more so than we than we saw earlier, or well, heard earlier, <laughs> heard earlier when I tested the uh, tested the exhaust just to see how it sounded. Go ahead and get a race exhaust in there. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, it doesn't technically need a race exhaust, but full straight pipe system, it's a, it's definitely going to sound legit. I'm thinking we're just going to go ahead and max it. We might as well go ahead and max it because a lot of these older uh, motors don't get super high in power, but if you max them out, they they they, they get they get to the point where they're decently powerful. I mean, they're not going to be as powerful as, you know, a, a modern LS, for example. I mean, some of them are. Like the older um the older Hemi that's in the that's in the Charger, that thing gets crazy powerful. But um some of these older engines they don't get too powerful, but they definitely have they definitely have quite enough power uh to spin up the rear tires. And keep you sideways, obviously. Go ahead and just a couple more things to get in there. Oil and cooling done. Just get the flywheel and we are done. Now we're just gonna go ahead and go to the tuning uh, tuning setup. We're gonna lay we're gonna lay down a base setup on this car, and then we're gonna go to the track, possibly do a little bit of live tuning. But if it doesn't need any live tuning, then, then there's then there's not mm, we might not do it. We might not do it if it doesn't need it. We might just run it with the baseline setup if that's all it needs. Because some cars, that's all they need is a baseline setup, and they're good to go. I've had um, various drift cars that are like that that they just needed a baseline setup. This one may and it may not. It just depends because, like I said, some cars need it, some cars don't. Um, this may, I'm actually predicting that this probably won't need any more, uh, messing with other than just a baseline setup, but then again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong, um, about that on other drift cars. I've been actually completely wrong on some drift cars where I was like, nah, it, it'll only need a baseline setup. It won't need any, you know, live tuning really whatsoever. Uh, I was extremely wrong, uh, a couple of times as far as that goes, so, you never know. Some of these cars can be, uh, some of these cars can throw you a curveball as far as uh, as far as what tunes they like. So um, we're gonna go ahead and go to. I go to Bernie's Alps a lot, but I know I, I know I go there a lot, but I still want to go there. Um, Prague I go to, but I haven't been there in a little while. I, I might go to Prague. Actually, no, no, we are going to the t we're yeah we're going to the airfield. The yeah full open course, full open course. Um, just gonna test this thing like crazy. Just see how it goes sideways. Do a bunch of burnout tests in it, and just see what kind of angles we can hold in this thing. Maybe do, maybe do some uh, Jim Connor style stuff around the airplane. That would be sweet. That would be sweet if we can end up uh, if we end up doing that. Um, but what what I might really want to do though is get this tune dialed in and make sure it's the way I want it. So let's actually go ahead and see how it sounds with the supercharger though. It sounds good. It sounds really, 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 really good. Oh yeah, it gets sideways. Wow. The steering is really interesting. The steering feel is nice. It's not too quick, but it's not too slow either. It's a nice steering rack. It's a nice steering feel. It's got a lot of control to it. 
very, very easy to keep sideways. This is a very easy car to drift. That's what I'm, um, what I'm learning from, uh, from drifting this car. And I like this stock motor because it's very, uh, very torquey. Um, I'm glad I didn't swap it out for something else. I'm really, really glad actually that I didn't swap it out for something else because, like I said, um, oh crap! Stop! Stop! Woo! Oh jeez, that was a little too close for me. That was actually way too close for me. But anyway, I'm really, really glad that I did not swap out. Uh, this original motor that I just like, you know, just built it up because it works really nicely. It's super torquey. And then you also have that extra power added on with the supercharger. So it works really nicely just as an overall package. I really like the way um, the power delivery feels. I really like the way it's it's just balanced. It's just has this nice, nice balance to it. It's very smooth. It's not a car that's going to surprise you a lot. It's not going to um, it's not going to bite you like halfway through a drift like some of my other turbo cars will. And I'll admit, those cars may be more exciting to drive sometimes, but if you're looking for, like, maximum effectiveness, something like this, like a really, really reliable, really, um, really easy, simple base setup like this, you're good to go. Um, you, you're definitely good to go as far as, uh, as far as a nice, reliable setup. Build yourself one of these if you want a super effective setup, um, for online lobbies, because this thing is awesome, just from what I've, uh, driven of it so far. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is, I mean... The brakes aren't quite as top-notch as I might like them to be, but I use the e-brakes so much anyway that it doesn't really matter. Um, it depends. Like, a lot of people um, will initiate drifts just with the brake. Like, no e-brake at all. They'll just they'll just brake. And for somebody like that, they might want to mess with the braking, um, the, uh, the, the braking force and braking pressure just a little bit. Just to get it the way they want it, or the way they like it. But for me, it suits me just fine because I end up using the e-brake almost all the time anyway. Suits me just fine. So I very, I really have very few complaints about this car. I mean, it looks spectacular. It's a, it's a classic Mustang. It looks spectacular. I mean, maybe if you're maybe if you're a Camaro guy, you might disagree. But I think these old older Mustangs just look absolutely spectacular, and it's really nice to have one that that looks this good that you can do this kind of stuff with that, that you can go into an online lobby and have something other than an s13 missile car i mean don't get me wrong as you know missile cars are very cool i love that whole style that look but i mean going into a drift lobby and ruling like just ruling the lobby in a classic muscle car that's just epic right there that there is absolutely nothing wrong with that that is like one of the most epic things you can do in forza if you go into a drift lobby and just rule the whole thing in a classic muscle car. That is just beast. That is just absolutely beast and extremely fun to do. So I, I definitely, I, I highly recommend building yourself one of these. If you guys haven't um, tried this car out yet from the DLC, highly, highly recommend building yourself one of these because it is absolutely totally worth it. Um, totally worth it to build yourself one of these. It's a very fun car to drift. Um, very good sounding car. The sound of this car is absolutely insane, especially with the, uh, the supercharger. I might try it in the future with the turbos, just to see, um, just to see what they sound like. Just, you know, hooked up to this, to this motor, because I, I assume they probably sound, um, really, really awesome, because either way, you know, either type of forced induction is gonna sound good with this, with this motor, because it's a really good sounding motor, and I think pretty much whatever you want to strap onto it, it would work really well, and even though I haven't tried the turbos yet, I, I would assume that if you wanted to have a turbo setup, like if you really wanted to have a turbo setup, you could just fine, it wouldn't, it's not like this car only works with a supercharger, if you wanted to go for a turbo, just go for it, if you want to go for a turbo, go for it, just copy the rest of the setup except for the supercharger, and stick a, tur a set of turbos on it, and you'll be good to go, it's an absolutely um, amazingly balanced car, very smooth, very simple, um, definitely, definitely like it, definitely um, give it very, very, um, very, very high marks as far as what it can do, how it feels, how smooth it is, and I definitely think that this should be, if you're a Forza Drifter, this should definitely be in your garage. So, if you guys enjoyed this drift build of this absolutely epic Mustang, don't forget to leave a like, tell me in the comment section below what you guys thought of it, and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later.